everybody. Um, I just thought I'd make a video on how to install um, the script I've been writing for the Arteria um, MK2, uh, Keylab 61 MK2. It might work for 88 and 49. I haven't tested uh, tested it, but hopefully um, someone else does and lets me know if it's working or not. Um, it also might work for the, uh, the Keylab Essential keyboards. Um, I noticed when I was developing that the, the MIDI codes were roughly the same. Uh, but anyway, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you um, how to install my script, um, starting from how to get the files, how to download it, where to save, and so forth. Um, also, cover I guess I'll cover in a subsequent video um, how to get the Analog Lab uh, integration working as well. Um, so, or maybe I'll maybe I'll do it in this video. Um, but okay, uh, let's get started. Um, so right now I have FL Studio uh, opened. And right now, if I go to Options MIDI Settings, you can see that my keyboard is up, um, but it's not configured. Um, so ignore the Akai. I have another MIDI device, but the one that's important is the Keylab. Um, on Windows, uh, I believe the DAW device is actually called MIDI in 2 slash, uh, MIDI in 2 and MIDI out 2, followed by the name of the keyboard. Um, and in Mac, uh, this is what it'll look like. Um, so I apologize if it's if I if I mixed it up uh, right now I'm screen recording from a Mac. Um, if I do get a setup on my uh, PC, I'll I'll try to create another video for Windows as well. Um, but for now, uh, everything's pretty much the same. Just the naming is slightly different. But you'll see that um, you know when you turn on the keyboard, uh, nothing is set up, and you know that means like if I were to go to my keyboard, and if I were to press the um, these transport buttons. You see, they don't do anything. They just uh, send a MIDI note that gets played back. Um, so we want to fix that. Uh, so first thing you need to do is you need to go to download my script. And if you used um, Git before, uh, you know the fastest way is to do a, um, you know, the Git clone this directory and then once in a while sync um, to the latest update. Um, but if you don't have, if you don't know how to use Git, um, you know you have one option, which is to go to desktop.github.com and download the installer. And then you have a nice um, you have a nice uh, app for um, doing the setup through here, um, and you also see it when you go here. You have this open with GitHub Desktop. Uh, if you want to go that route, you know you could just download the zip. Um, so I'll do this um, because this is the most common for everyone. So you would download the zip file, <coughs> um, and then once it's downloaded, uh, let's see where to go. Here it is. Uh, you would extract the file, and what you would do is you would need to copy this folder uh, or cut. I'll use cut. Um, let's see, edit, cut. So, oops. Um, not really good with this. Hello, edit, copy. Okay, and then let's go to the documents folder. In Windows, there's a my documents folder somewhere. There's an image line folder under FL Studio. Um, and then you would go to settings and then under hardware. Um, and if you forget, forget all of this, uh, if you look up MIDI script um, on FL Studios or ImageLine's website, um, they do explain how to set this up, but you would paste it in here. And what's important is that it has to be in its own folder. Um, if it's not in its own folder, the scripts are just going to be skipped. Um, they expect a folder within this hardware folder to be read from. Um, so this is an important step you need to make sure. Okay, so once this is in, uh, all the files are here and you're good. Uh, if you ever want to turn on the debug, um, the, the debug readouts, it's under this debug.py file, but that's just for the developers. Um, so let's go back to FL Studio and uh, I'm going to go to Options and MIDI Settings. And what I want to do is, um, first I want to configure these keyboard, uh, the, the port numbers for these keyboards. Um, so for the MIDI one, um, on Windows it'll just look like Keylab MK261 MIDI. I think it'll look the same. And it's it's the one that doesn't have MIDI in 2, MIDI, MIDI out 2. Um, and then the DAW one is going to look like MIDI in 2 slash MIDI out 2 followed by Keylab MK261 uh, or whatever key we're using. Um, so anyway, uh, what we're going to do is for the the DAW or the MIDI in 2, we're going to configure the script. Oh, uh, so because I just installed, I need to restart FL Studio. 
um, just because I just copied that folder and on startup it'll actually reread these um, the scripts. So I'm going to restart FL Studio. So under here, um, I'm going to go to controller type and you'll see here there's two scripts that are um, here. So I want you to, for the DAW or the MIDI in 2 MIDI out, uh, 2 device, um, select that and go to controller type and set it to MIDI in 2 MIDI out 2. And uh, for the MIDI one, you want to set it to the other one that says MIDI. Um, and so th they should match up the naming. Uh, one other thing you need to do is for the MIDI in 2, MIDI out 2, set that to port 2. And for the MIDI one, set that to port 1. Uh, you can make it any arbitrary ports you want, um, but this is just to make it easier. Um, so let's just call it 1 and 2. Okay, and that is it. So once this is there, um, you will see on your keyboard, uh, where is it? Um, on this keyboard, so actually I'm just going to turn it, power cycle it, and what you'll see is it'll say connected to FL Studio, and now these transport buttons will work. So this will actually do stuff. So this is playing, um, this is recording, and that, that arms it, now it's recording. see I'm playing stuff and it's recording as well. Okay. Um, so that's just a, you know, um, a quick getting it to work. Now there's one more thing I wanted to show you how to get working which is um, Analog Lab. And um, that extra script that I installed will actually let you do this. It's There is a built-in um, factory script that um, you know you can also use as well. Uh, so if, let me show you. So this is the factory script. So um, this is actually a buggy script. It will, if you don't have a sustain pedal, then you can go ahead and use this, but you can also use my script. Um, I fixed the sustain pedal. Um, so uh, what you can do now is, uh, don't, don't worry, you don't need to change anything, but um, uh, now like if I add a analog lab, um, what you can do now is, uh, I mean, Bring this up first. So, uh, by default, um, when we're using the keyboard, um, one thing I want you to know is that uh, you need to make sure this DAW button um, is lit. Um, if it's not lit, if you're on uh, user mode, uh, it's going to go to a completely different mapping and it won't work. Uh, my script won't work. Um, on the other hand, if you're going to use a Analog Lab plugin, uh, we're going to be switching to Analog Lab. And right now it's broken um, because, here I'll show you, in this analog lab, this is the only step that you have to do, but any analog lab plugin that you add, you need to go to, you need to click on this gear icon and go to this, um, this setting here, and you need to change the import, input port to 10. Uh, and you need to do this for any analog lab plugin that you use. Um, after that, everything's good. Uh, so if I go to my keyboard, you'll see that I can, as long as I switch to this analog lab button, it'll behave um, as if, uh, you know, as, as it was intended to. Um, so I can scroll, I can even use this category button to pick the category, press, and then choose the sound button. Um, and then all these sliders, they work. Um, so you can see on my screen, uh, and camera, uh, I'm tweaking these knobs and they're also adjusting here. Um, and these these global transport buttons, uh, they should map over properly to my script still. Uh, let me test that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these still map over properly. Um, but if you do want to use like any other plugins, like Flex, uh, make sure you switch back to DAW. Um, and one thing to note is that uh, these sliders, um, oh, right now I'm in, sorry, I'm in the mixer. If I go to encoder, if I'm trying to control the channel, uh, it'll tweak some parameter um, for analog lab, and I really don't know what parameter it's tweaking um, because uh, my script, I haven't uh, mapped analog lab properly, um, but I believe it's easier if you just use the analog lab um, button and then control this as it was intended. Um, okay, so that should be it for now. Oh, and let me uh, show you what else. Um, if you were to add other scripts, like let's say Piano uh, V2, which is also an analog lab script, um, you know, you would do the same thing again. 
switch this to port 10. And then when we go back um, on the keyboard screen, uh, let's put this aside, you will see that um, you know everything works as is. Again, Analog Lab has to be highlighted. So I can switch to any other keyboard and continue playing. Okay, um, so if you guys have any questions, and I, I apologize for uh, my, my uh, presentation style is not so great, so I apologize, there's a lot of ums. I'm still getting used to trying to screen record. This is something I'm not used to. I, I write code for a living. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, um, you know, feel free to leave comments. Um, sometimes I'm bad at reviewing the YouTube comments. I'm not a YouTuber. Um, so you can always visit the um, image line form thread and just um, ping me there. I'm, I'm usually pretty active on reading that. Um, but yeah, if there's any questions, you know, let me know. Um, also, I'm looking for users with uh, uh, the essential keyboards um, to test out my script. I think they work, uh, but I just wanted to confirm that. Um, okay, so that's it for now. Um, and if there's any questions, oh, uh, one thing I also wanted to point out was I did make a change on my script, which is that when you first start it up, um, it by default it defaults to the slider mixer panel now. So when you move these, it actually adjusts the slider panels. Um, so if you want to control plugins, um, you have to hold this button down as a second step. Um, so this is a request that another user had made, and it, it made sense because if you use um, the Mackie Control Universe um, generic script uh, for the Arteria keyboard, it starts off you know in the same functionality. So I thought it it's best to make it you know parity. Um, okay, so that's it for now. I'll end this.